Hey everyone, my name is Tegan and welcome back to Tandy Writes. As it is now March the 1st, on filming day not upload day, it is time to recap all of the reads that I read in February. I'm going to do a little cheating, so I technically read one less book, but one of them I finished in the very early hours of this morning, to the point where like my mind counts it as yesterday. So my reading planner is a slight mess this month. It looks very sparse. There's a lot of places where, I think my main issue this month was I started reading books for about a chapter, put it down for two weeks and just changed my mind and started reading something else, which I didn't document. I only document when I'm started seriously reading things. And I read eight books this month. I read 10 last month. And eight is still usually like a good month for me, like a very good month last year. So like I still did okay if reading's a competition and I want to win but I can't help but feel that I didn't have productive use of my time as I was jumping between reads so much, but eight reads is still very good. Out of these reads, I think there were like a quarter physical, three quarters digital, which includes ebook, advanced copy, and audiobook. I read two audiobooks, as I did last month, which were the first two books of the Fog of the Air series, so The Cruel Prince and The Wicked King, which are hidden away up in the corner up here, but something this month has just like reignited my love for them and I haven't read at least The Cruel Prince, I think it said five years ago was my last update on it, so it's very nice to get back into those again. And I gave both of those four stars I believe. I think the first time I read Cruel Prince I think I only gave it three stars, but it's definitely a four star read. The one physical book I read this month was Study in Jaren by Ava Reed, which I think is hidden like behind this plant somewhere. I have the Alcrate edition, which is like the beautiful opalescent iridescent cover. And this is the book that I originally pre-ordered last year. I was going to get the Watson's edition and I got it in the Alcrate box instead last year. And I knew I was going to love it. Like I knew I was going to love it. I just didn't read it for months for some reason. I think I have a fear like, I know I'm going to love a book and I read it. I think I hype myself up so much for it that sometimes it turns out to be a disappointment. But this one was not a disappointment. I'm gl I am glad a little bit that I waited for the hype to fade, but I've written a review. I'm going to record a review and it'll be out sometime. I still have other books I need to get to reviewing first. This month I had two ebook reads that were not library reads. The first one is The Church of the Mountain of Flesh, which is a beta read by Kyle Wakefield. And I don't even know where to begin to describe this book, because it's a beta read, it's not officially out yet. It's going to be out, I think, sometime this year. But I'm going to talk about that in a lot more detail, closer to the time. And when I finish my read, I'm only halfway through right now because I have to keep reading a chapter and then like take stepping away to process what I read and become a normal human being again. But this is a book that I'm so excited about. I will put the official description here so you can read it if you want. But this is a book I'm very excited about. I know it's going to be a five star read and I can't wait for it to be about officially so I can like hold my copy of the book and gush about it on the internet. A book that I have counted as a read despite not writing it on here is Chrysalis and Wequiem by... I can't remember who it's by, but it's an indie published book that was completely dominating like my social media. The marketing for this book is impeccable. So I got an advanced copy, I got it off NetGalley, and I'm most of all impressed that an indie author has how expensive NetGalley is in their budget. And I sat down and was like, yeah, I'm so excited to read this book, I know I'm going to love it. And I didn't. And I think it's the first book this year that I DNF'd. I did write a, like, a brief little review for I think NetGalley and Goodreads as I got the copy in exchange for an honest review. I'm going to pull up here so I'll just read you a little bit. So yeah, this book seemed like it could have just been written for me specifically because it's a tragic sapphic romance and the cover is beautiful and I immediately put it on my TBR when I saw it for the first time. And it's dark academia in a sense, I believe. And I will always try my best to support indie authors as an indie author. I think having the community is very important. But I was just so disappointed reading it. Usually I'm very lenient with indie and self-published books having grammatical issues because I know how expensive it can be to afford an editor and we rely on self-editing a lot. But this one was borderline impossible to read in some places. Sentences have like such extreme structural issues from a technical and aesthetic standpoint that it severely affected the work to the point where I was reading things and I thought it was incomprehensible. And then I thought like, am I just not smart enough to read this book? And then I read a few more reviews and I realise that, you know, all of us cannot understand what's going on. I think it does have like a very unique collection of themes, characters, magical elements, academic atmosphere, romantic queer obsession, murder, angels, ghosts, butterflies. It had so much going on, but none of these elements really works together. And there's, it's definitely, I think, marketed as a dark academia, and there is an attempt to write the genre, but it missed out academia, which is a very, you know, integral part of dark academia. 
And I very much dislike leaving negative reviews in general. I try to only write reviews if I'm gushing about it, or if it is a case where I have an advanced copy and leaving a review is expected of me. So I was desperate to love this book. The cover is beautiful, the marketing campaign is obviously dominating my social media, and the story seems like it has potential, and I hate the word potential. And I hope in the future the author has either the opportunity or the desire to rework this book. That felt harsh, let's move on to my library reads. I read three library books this month. The first one was The Thief Knot, which I have no idea where it is on my bookshelves right now, but it's the fourth book in Kate Milford's like greenhouse, um, greenhouse? Green Glass House, we'll go for universe. Because the first two books are by the same character, they're set in the same place, they're like a duology in a sense. And the third book is like a separate set of characters in the same world, and the fourth book is a separate set of characters in the same world as well. I started reading the third one, didn't quite enjoy it, so I skipped to the fourth one because they're not connected plot wise, so I could do that. And I loved the fourth one. So these are technically middle grade books, but they have like whimsy and fantasy elements and mystery. And the fourth one was very similar plot wise to the first one, which I believe I've had in my end of year wrap up videos, in terms of like the mystery, the like almost, I was gonna say found family, but it's like a ragtag team of children teaming up to solve a mystery. And I think what I like specifically about The Thief Knot is that it's a little bit darker than the original two Greenhouse Glass books. So as much as they are still catered for a young middle grade audience, I enjoyed it too, greatly. I wish I could see whether- oh it's here! Here. I don't have the rest of the series yet, but here. This book here, incredible, phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal. Children's and middle grade books that do work for adults as well. The next two were novellas, in a sense. The first one was Drowned County, which is the second book in the Silver in the Wood trilogy, and I loved the first book. Second one, I enjoyed. I liked it. I just don't think I could quite understand why it was written, or still like part of a trilogy as a first one, because it my favourite character had very limited page time, he didn't feel like himself anymore. The plot didn't hugely make sense, and this is like a 150 or something page novella, and the plot was didn't feel like it had any impact on like the world as a whole, which is again very hard to say as in novellas, but there's just something not quite right about it, where like I still really enjoyed reading it, I just don't understand why. And the other library book I read was The Salt Grows Heavy, which is again another novella. And this is one I've had on my TBR for, I want to say, years now. And I was so excited to read it, and I loved the concept, I loved the cover, I loved so many things. I read about it and the reviews, and then I read the book and I didn't love it. I think I gave it two stars. My main issue was the book because the plot was still interesting, but the writing was just so difficult to understand. I felt like I was pulling my dictionary out to Google every other word at some points. And I think the prose being that heavy, or just using very pretentious sounding words, really did take away my reading experience, because I should have loved this book, and I just, just couldn't understand it. I feel like I have so much more to say about that specific book, but again, as I couldn't understand what was going on, I really can't like relay to you what I think. And this month, out of the 12 books on my TBR that I tended to read this year, I read one. It was A Study in Drowning, which means I've read 4 out of 12 overall, so a third of the books, two months in the year, not bad. And that means I took one book off my 80-something book physical TBR, and I added just, just two this month, plus I bought two and then I had um, a Luma Crate box, I had an old Luma Crate box, I had... I was going to say I had my birthday, so I got gifted books, but I specifically asked for books I've already read and loved. So that takes away. So the only books I purchased this month were Girl Goddess Queen by B. Fitzgerald and The Bad Ones by Melissa Albert. And these were on, you know in Warts, so you get the table where it's like, well, I'm going half price books. There were these ones. And I think my TBR for March, again, as continuing to try and get through the specific books I laid out for myself to read this year, is to read the books I've also purchased this year. Because there's four of them. It was Gogolas Queen, The Bad Ones. I think it was also God Killer and So Let Them Burn. All books which I imagine I would give four or five star ratings. But they're also all paperbacks. And I can find myself reading a paperback in just one or two days. I feel very efficient at reading paperbacks. So I think I can get through those. Um, my specific monthly TBR that I wrote down, as you can see I've read one of them, 
is again my TBR that I set myself at the start of the year, plus books I bought, plus books I got in the Water and Stow in January, plus a Lumicray and book box books, which we're just not getting through. I think that's all I had to say for this month. I would talk about like my genres again, which I think I mentioned in my first video, but they haven't changed. It's still like dark, sad, adventurous. I think I read around 1,500 pages and 20 audiobook hours, I think, around that, which I th makes my page average about 300 pages per book as I did read some novellas this month. My overall rating was 3.4 stars, I believe. Last month was 3.8, it was a very good month, but this month I had a few lower ranked reads. I missed a book, I missed a book. The fourth library book I read was a graphic novel called The Girl from the Sea, which is, I think it's young adult, but it is about a girl who almost drowns at sea, and then this selkie, this seal girl, saves her, and they kiss because the first girl thinks it's a fantasy. And you know, true love's kiss and lets this other girl walk on land for the day, and they become friends, and it's sapphic, and it's so sweet, and... I was going to say low stakes, but again it's about this girl who is closeted, I believe, to my memory, and she's trying to fit in with her friend group who don't understand that, and then she has this like secret girlfriend who is not a girl, <laughs> or a human girl, and it's about her just trying to find her place in her world, and how she feels like she can only ever fit in is when she moves out and moves to a big city, and it's got like such a slightly sad, bittersweet ending. And it was a graphic novel and it's beautifully illustrated and there was bonus content in the graphic novel where the author slash artist showed off like their original character designs and things like that, which is just also very nice to read. And I feel like I'm getting wheezy because I'm slightly, I got a throat thing going on, but I'm just, I can't believe I forgot to mention this book. I've mentioned it now, it's all good. Okay, so they are the eight books that I read in February and that is all I have to say about them. I think I've got all of them. So thank you so much for watching this video, and I hope to see you next time. Bye!